Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk you through my travel makeup bag. I'm so excited about this because I swear I thought the day was never going to come. Um, but I'm finally, the night before, we're driving down to the airport, finally actually packing everything up. If you haven't been following along, I've left everything till the last minute because it was all very up in the air no pun intended, um, because of all the restrictions and all the testing and all of the rules. Uh, but it really does seem like we're going to New York. So I'm gonna have to pack my travel makeup. I did actually already put all of these things in um, a makeup bag a couple of weeks ago. I would recommend this as good practice. I just threw something on the floor because it's difficult to know if you've forgotten anything until you realize that you need it. And so if you pack everything in your makeup bag ahead of time, use it a few times, you're gonna realize, oh, I've forgotten my mascara immediately. I've also made some tweaks because my skin is just not having it at the moment. Originally, I had in here as a base, just in case, because, as a base, just in case, because my skin has been a little bit dry and cantankerous, I would say, I had in my MUA Pro Base Softening Facial Oil Stick, which is really great if you do have kind of like here and there dry skin and you wanna wear certain kinds of foundations that maybe sometimes settle and they go a bit funny. It just adds a little bit of something before you put on your makeup. What I've decided to replace that with is this, which arrived from La Roche-Posay a week or so ago. It's just been downstairs, I haven't really thought to use it, and then my skin was quite sore the other day, and I thought, I'm gonna try that. I'm not entirely sure what it does. Everything's in French. But on the back, it says, Tratamiento, Hydrante, Calmante. Sounds like, oh, Repardo. Sounds like treatment, hydrates, calms, and repairs. Is it called Tolerane, this brand, this, this range? I don't know, I, I don't speak French. I don't know if you gathered that. Um, but this looks teeny tiny. You only need the very, very smallest amount. I'll show you what comes out. Really, that is enough. It's crazy, um, but it's quite, I wanna say it's quite oily, but it absorbs really, really quickly. As you're putting it on, you're like, oh, this is not gonna be, this is like, I can feel it on my skin. It's got that kind of, oiliness to it, but it really does absorb. And I don't know if that's because my skin currently is super dehydrated or what, um, but this is now my primer slash moisturizer of choice underneath my foundation. I am taking an SPF with me as well. That's in with my skincare, uh, but I just thought I'd let you know, I'm taking this. I originally put in my Estee Lauder double wear because we are gonna be wearing masks all throughout New York. And um, I was thinking I want something that's gonna stay put underneath the mask. My skin just cannot deal with this right now. It makes me look like the Crypt Keeper. It's so aging. Um, no matter what I put it on with, no matter which technique, it's just not having it. And so I'm not taking this because it's completely pointless. I'm sticking with my number seven. This is the Hydra Luminous. Um, medium coverage, SPF 15, suitable for sensitive skin, visibly fresh and radiant skin. Absolutely. It gives you kind of medium coverage. It depends on how much you want to put on. But um, on the days where my skin just seems to not want any foundation on at all, I start with this La Roche-Posay moisturizer, I was gonna say foundation. And then I put a small amount of this on with my fingertips. And after that, I go in with a beauty blender and kind of go around those areas and just make, like perfect the finish, just make everything nice, as Dorinda Medley would say. Um, so those two things are going in there 100%. Now today I have on that moisturizer and all I have on is the Bobbi Brown corrector, these little pots are fabulous. If you are looking for something that is relatively high coverage, but very, very flattering on dryness, any kind of fine lines, you wouldn't think that from a product like this, but it really is fantastic. It is, I mean, I don't understand it. I really don't. It's very creamy, but it's not heavy. It doesn't settle in the way that you would think that it would. I mean, I can't even show you it on my, didn't even show up. So how I've been using this, is I take my beauty blender and I'm just stippling it in and then I'm putting it on kind of that area, my chin where I maybe need a little bit, wherever there's some redness, but it's not so much coverage that I feel like I need to go all over my face to even it out. It's just adding enough this way that it's making me look a little bit fresher, it's giving me some coverage where I need it and I'm not putting it everywhere. So when I am wearing a mask, I'm not worried about everything rubbing away because there's not that much there. There's just, it's in the areas that it needs to be there it's not necessarily on the end of my nose. It's not necessarily here where it would be rubbing away. And so it's less to worry about. So I'm taking that too. That's the only concealer I'm taking. Another thing I have on today is this, which I love. I've loved this since it arrived. This was sent to me. It's the Fenty Beauty Cream 
bronzer in butter biscuit. Um, Cheeks Out, is that what the product is called? I think. Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in 02 Butter Biscuit. And it is brilliant. If you are looking for a cream bronzer, I never got along with the Chanel one. I had it twice and twice I um, got rid of it because I just wasn't, I didn't understand the hype. It just didn't do it for me. Um, and this arrived, I would never ever in a million years have picked it up because of that experience. I just thought, oh, it's not for me. Amazing. I really, really like this. I would actually like to try this in some different colours because I like this, but it's quite warm. And I think especially in the wintertime, maybe I could do with something a bit cooler. But I have this on again today um, with, I, I just used this brush from It Cosmetics. I buff it here and up here. And it just goes on like an absolute dream. I love it. Blush is the NARS Sex Appeal, which is this. If you know me at all, you will know my love of this. It's the easiest blush in the world. You can, I mean, I haven't reapplied it for the video and it was very early this morning that I got ready, but it's just such a pretty kind of petal pink flush. And I first read about it in a magazine when Blake Lively's makeup artist said she used it on her and I was like, yes, that is the blush that I want. It's just... You can build it up if you want it to be stronger, but for someone who's quite heavy handed and finds blush quite difficult to blend out when you do it wrong, my all time favorite. Um, I then also have on the Hourglass, this is an expensive makeup bag today, guys. Um, I have on the Hourglass Dim Light, this is a mini, you can get these from, I think, Cult Beauty now. Um, my autofocus is not having it today. Um, you can get these from a, a few different places. I would recommend that you get the mini one because a large one, it's going to take you a long time to use it, but there's going to be all the more chance of you smashing it or breaking it, especially if you take it away with you, because they're so finely milled, these powders. They're just delicate. And I've never had a problem with this one, but if it did smash, it's a lot less painful than the full size, because these are expensive. But this has lasted me a long time, and I really like this for, like, that area. It gives you a real, like, a bright glow without any of that glitter ball sparkle none of that also taking the hourglass eye primer now full disclosure there's no way in a million years i would have bought this this was sent to me i was sent quite a few hourglass things quite a while ago now and i barely told you about any of them because i was massively disappointed by most of it i just thought it was i don't know if my expectations were really high because hourglass or um if they were just really poor i just was so so disappointed i think probably it was mostly expectations but your expectations should be high when things are that expensive. Now this is really nice, but I've tried other ones that are as nice. So I'm not recommending this. I'm just using it because I have it and it works. Um, so this is the um, Hourglass Veil Eye Primer and the <laughs> I'm really pulling out my best of my best to take on holiday with me. And I'm taking the Viseart Most Expensive Eyeshadow Award um, palette that I was sent a few years ago and didn't use because I almost felt guilty for having it, truthfully. I, I didn't want to mention it, because it's great, it's really, really nice. But I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want to rec recommend it because I can't say it's worth the money. But they are the best eyeshadows that I own. But I would never have bought them. It's a strange dilemma as a blogger when you are sent something. Because if someone had said, would you like to receive this? I would have said no. Based on all of the reasons that I've just told you. Even if I really, really wanted something, if I wouldn't be prepared to buy it, I would have said no. Because I can't, in good conscience, say, oh my God, you have to have this. Because I, I wouldn't, if it disappeared tomorrow, I wouldn't repurchase it because it's so expensive. But it is really, really good. And it's the Neutral Mats 01. In fact, I'm going to just double check that this is even still available because I have a habit of doing that. It is. It seems to be a staple. Um, it's £69. That's crazy. If you're a makeup artist, great. For a regular person, £70 eyeshadow palette. Seems excessive. Anyway, it's on sale for 59.47 right now if you're interested. I was gonna take a brow, um, what's the word? What's this called? I was gonna, a brow brush, that's not right. Brow gel, and I'm not going to because I've not been using it. And so I'm not gonna, I don't need to take it. I am gonna take my Lash Sensational Primer and my Lash Sensational Mascara. These are my favorite things in the world. I just can't see that anything is going to come out at any price point that's gonna make me stray away from these two things. These are the best ever. I have a selection of lip liners and liquid lips. I also do have my um, lip maximizer from Dior because this kind of is like somewhere between a lip balm and um, a gloss. 
but I don't know when I'm really going to use this because masks. So I'm thinking what most of all I'm going to be using is lip liners on their own, which last pretty well, or the liquid lip. So just a, a variety of colours of different things. A loose powder of choice right now, I'm kind of on the fence about because I know it's full of glitter. Oh, I also have the lip that I'm wearing right now. This, by the way, every time I wear it, someone asks me what it's called. It is the Power Matte Lip Pigment from NARS in American Woman. And I bought it because of the name. But I mean, I love the colour. But I mostly bought it because of the name. This is full of glitter. It's not as full of glitter as some HD powders, but it has still got sparkle. And if I'm in direct sunlight, which outdoors, um, I'm going to look like a Twilight vampire. So kind of on the fence about it. I'm taking it because it's my favourite right now but I am aware of its flaws. It's the Primark Blurred Out Powder. I mean, it's great. It's really, really good stuff. And if you are going somewhere in the evening, if you're going somewhere, you know, it's really just direct sunlight. That's the only problem. Bright lights, not a problem. It's just sunlight. That That's gonna give you away. Tricky, tricky, because we want the glitter in there because it's what reflects the light. It's what blurs. It's like, oh, I don't look over there. Look at this, look at this. Bright, 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 sparkle, sparkle. Um, but it is a problem when you're actually out in the sunlight. Um, so also I've got a selection of brushes. Would you be interested in seeing, if you want to see these brushes, if you want to see these brushes, I have a feeling there are going to be some mornings when I'm up, because I'm sharing a room with my teenage daughter, I have a feeling there's going to be some times when I'm awake and kind of like want to go do something, but she's not awake yet. And I can probably um, film something or go live, depending on what time of day that actually ends up being here. And uh, we'll talk through the minutiae of some of the other stuff that I'm taking. But I'm taking a handful of brushes, my Grindhouse Urban Decay pencil sharpener, which someone reminded me, and I'm gonna do it right now, empty it, emptied. And there were some other things that I was gonna take, but I really don't need them. This is a full makeup bag. This is as much stuff as I possibly could need. But the most important thing is, there's still space up here to bring home a new makeup. If you're at all interested in travel vlogs, I will have them and lots of information about how it is to travel right now. You know, the whole situation with the testing, um, the airports, everything. I'm going to get into some real minutiae of that stuff. And then we're going to have just like the fun travel vlogs as well. So if you're into that kind of thing, go and follow my other channel. I have now become Michaela Talks here at Miss Budget Beauty RIP. I... It's at the end of an era, truly. I feel like we just kind of brushed over it um, and someone was like, please a little bit emotional. Maybe we should have paid more of it. But when Michaela talks now, it feels more in keeping with what I actually do here. And Michaela vlogs over on my second channel where usually I vlog. So be sure to follow me here, be sure to follow me there. And I will see you guys in the next one. I forgot something. This, I know I've been really, really, and this was coming with me. I know I've been really into misguided Superfix recently, but last night I went out with my friend and my skin was not enjoying makeup. I took my makeup off twice. And then the third time I was like, okay, get it together. Um, and once I'd done everything, I went back to my beloved Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. And I just don't know why I ever stopped using it, honestly. It's just beautiful. It is just beautiful. And on those days where your skin does not want to play ball and you need it to, it is the best thing ever. For those of you who never heard me talk about this before, it's basically soft focus in a can and it gives you that kind of lived in makeup look instantly. It makes everything just look natural like skin and I can't think of anything you would regret less than this purchase. I'm also taking a very bougie light up mirror but we can talk about that.